NBC News continues with its color coverage of Apollo 12, brought to you by Gulf Oil, producers of more and better energy from oil. Here once again is Frank McGee. Well, this crew has not had the best of all possible luck with weather on this flight. It was launched through a rain cloud and uh, either created or attracted lightning, which struck it once or twice on its way up. And coming down 10 days and four hours later in the Pacific, the seas were rough and the skies were overcast, but we were quite fortunate and got some good pictures of them during their reentry. Just where all this was, Jim Hartz will now explain. Okay, thank you, Frank. We were going to try to do this beforehand, but we were getting such uh, remarkable pictures that we didn't get a chance to come over here. This is a map of the Pacific area. Pango Pango, Hawaii is about uh, 1,200 miles north. And if you want to get a map out, the area where they landed was about 16 degrees south and 165 degrees west. And this array here shows you the main recovery force. The carrier at the time was steaming south, so we'll turn around that way. It was five miles north of the uh, landing point. These were the two planes that were out 165 miles uprange and downrange. The approach of the craft was this direction. And the helicopters that you saw, this was the prime recovery helicopter. Uh, this little plane stands for one that was circling around, directing the operations, the photographic helicopter and the backup helicopters. So this is the area, again, the track coming in this way. And we want to go back and uh, play a little bit of the videotape for you of the splashdown. Because we had such remarkable pictures, beautiful weather, the color was uh, amazing. And uh, describing it were NBC News correspondent Peter Hackett and correspondent Charles Murphy. With its three parachutes in the morning sun here in mid-Pacific, we couldn't ask for a better view. If we're lucky, we will also be close enough to get a good picture of the splashdown, which now is about two or three minutes away. The astronauts have just made a radio report they say all is okay, all is okay. The first astronaut radio report received here aboard ship. Where's Gary? Gary? The helicopters are on station, in position. We will be seeing them very shortly. And the operation for recovery, which is very complicated, but very much rehearsed, one of the Helicopter pilots told me he thought he could do it in his sleep. They've given over it so many times. And they have done it in the darkness. They've done it in rough seas, calm seas. So they really should be able to do it. There you see splashdown. Apollo 12 has ended its flight to the moon and has returned to the mid-Pacific. Now it's up to the ship to speed up, as we said. There's a short, uh, a brief sprinkle of showers here aboard ship. This was forecast. This will be no problem, I'm sure. Hello, Al. Are you going to keep the this mic open? The spacecraft now? now is in stable two. That is to say, it has tipped nose over. Now, within the next five or eight minutes, there will be no radio contact with the spacecraft because of the fact that with its nose over, its antenna so that was it, the splashdown at 3.58 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Almost to the second, one hour later, they were on the carrier, and now they have gone inside a mobile quarantine facility where they're being examined by physicians. And in a few moments, we expect them to come to the little door there and a microphone to be set up, and we expect to hear from them. So we'll be back with more coverage of the Apollo 12 splashdown and recovery after this from Gulf. It's now about 16 and a half minutes past five in the east, and uh, in about 15 minutes or so, we expect a telephone call from President Nixon in Washington to the crew of Apollo 12 aboard the carrier Hornet in the South Pacific. And I was watching the clock at the time that the helicopter was landing on the deck of the carrier, and they announced that the recovery had been completed. And if I'm right, and I think I am, it was almost at the second, one hour even from the time they touched down in the water until the time they touched down on the carrier. We mentioned a while ago they haven't had the best of all possible weather. Just getting this crew launched on November 14th required a very difficult decision for Walter Caprian, who was the launch director for the first time. Uh, bad weather, as you recall, had moved into Cape Kennedy, and President Nixon, as well as hundreds of other notables, were there, huddled under umbrellas. But a weather plane gave a favorable report, and the meteorological instruments at Cape Kennedy said there was no lightning in the launch area, not for many miles. 
So exactly on schedule at 11.22 a.m., Apollo 12 set off on its journey for the moon from a Eight, misty pad. Mission sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. All engines running. Commit liftoff. We have liftoff 11.22 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Pete Conrad reports that your program is in. Tower clear. We a pitch and a roll program, and this baby is really going. Roll's complete. Roger, Pete. We lost the platform, gang. I don't know what happened here. We had everything in the world drop out. Roger. Plus one. Fuel cell lights and AC bus light and fuel cell disconnect. AC bus overload one and two. Main bus A and B out. Apollo 12 Houston, try to reset your fuel cells now. Good staging and good thrust on the second stage. We have our problems here. I don't know what happened. Uh, I'm not sure you get hit by lightning. Now you heard it for the first time, Conrad saying he wasn't sure they had not been hit by lightning. The spacecraft electrical systems were shut down for several seconds, and the pulse rates of the three men rose to 150 per minute, which is understandable. Nevertheless, mission controllers seemed skeptical about Conrad's suggestion that Apollo 12 had actually been hit by lightning. But this film proves there was an electrical discharge on the pad about 36 seconds after liftoff. A NASA cameraman was positioned to record liftoff, and its lens was set for the amount of light which would be created by the ignition of the Saturn V first stage engine. Then the picture faded to blackness as the Saturn roared off. Fortunately, however, the camera was left running and caught a sudden flash. The lightning, or electrical discharge, lasted about 1 20th of a second. Now here is that flash made from a single frame of that film. Uh, the experts can, and doubtless will, argue whether it was natural lightning or not, or whether it was the same flash that Conrad saw, or what caused it. But he certainly saw something. And in retrospect, some people are saying it was a mistake to launch in such weather conditions. Here with more on that subject is John Dancy in Houston. Frank, there are, there are mission rules written for every mission. The rules, in effect, spell out the capability of the spacecraft to fly, uh, the capability of the spacecraft and its systems. And they say that if these conditions prevail, we will launch. If these conditions prevail, we will not launch. Well, there were mission rules for this mission, and they said that if, uh, if there was no lightning around, uh, if the pressure gradient was such uh, that, uh, that, that you could go ahead, then uh, you could go ahead with the launch. The mission rules which had been written up well in advance of the mission, said, OK, go ahead and launch. But the thing that haunts the people who try to foresee every possible, every foreseeable incident is that they will overlook something. And apparently, that is what happened this time. What they overlooked was the potential electric difference between Earth and the clouds above. Even though there was no lightning around, there was a potential electric difference uh, existing there and between the clouds on top and the earth below and any time you have that potential difference you can in theory get a spark sort of like like sticking a, a screwdriver into a, a light socket well, that, when the when the rocket rose on this ionized trail it created a, a contact between these two potential differences and apparently that is what happened now what does that mean for the future well, it means, obviously, that you don't want to launch in that kind of weather. You want to take a more careful look at it. But there's also such thing as, as clear day lightning, uh, lightning uh, that, that can exist when you have these, these potential differences, even on a, on a very clear day. So it's not just particularly a cloudy day that they're, they're will, they will worry about. It's likely that there will be some changes uh, in the mission rules or possibly in the spacecraft and uh, certainly an attempt to find some better way of measuring this potential, either in the clouds or in, the, in a clear sky. There's also a good possibility that we might very well go back to the old Mercury system of, of launching only on the most perfect of days. That was done, of course, because of the photographic requirements, but this one would be done for the safety of the spacecraft and the crew, right? Thank you, John. Of course, uh, there were lingering concerns throughout the mission as to what equipment aboard the spacecraft, if any, might have been damaged and how severely by the lightning or the electricity, whatever may have caused it. And so far as we know, at this time, nothing was damaged. 
You heard Conrad in that little uh, tape that was played a while ago reading off all the things that flashed warning lights when the uh, electricity hit the, uh, hit the rocket. And uh, one of the things that they were immediately concerned with was the platform, which is part of their guidance system. They were able to realign that once they got into orbit and got on the dark side, and they could line up on some stars and things like that, and got it back into operation. Brought the fuel cells back on, which provide their electrical energy, brought those back on almost immediately. But the concern did continue, subdued, but it was there until the re-entry and splash down today because uh, they couldn't be absolutely certain that perhaps uh, the parachute mechanism might have been affected by the electrical discharge. But again, so far as we know at this point, nothing was damaged, and certainly the flight was a success. We'll be back in just a moment. Now here's a word from Gulf. 